What's up, Vegas? We are back. Man, I'm recording this fresh off of winning third place in the My Vegas Man of the Year contest, so I'm feeling thrilled and excited. Today is also the party day where we are celebrating the one year anniversary party over at Davies. So this is going to be lit. And by the time it's released, you'll probably see everything that's happened. But I do want to show a little bit of foreshadowing because it's going to be an awesome night. I'm sitting here with Angel Roselle. She is a complete cannabis entrepreneur in the city. I'm about to read off a long ass list of things that she's doing. And then we could dive into that in the world of cannabis. She is the owner of 1010 Sensuals. She is also the owner and founder of Foxtails LV, which which is a mobile bartending and THC service. She is also a participant on Cooking for a Queen, which is cooking with cannabis. And she is a brand ambassador for Steezy, which sells premium indoor cannabis. Wow, what a list. <laughs> you must be one busy woman, I, I have am. to say. I am. I keep it busy. That's what keeps it going, you know? Yeah, it keeps you, mm -hmm. keeps you motivated, I have to say. And... I'm beginning to meet more cannabis entrepreneurs out mm -hmm. here. Why, why do you think that is? Is, is there a lot of like-minded individuals like you? Is it a little bit of the wild, wild west in the back end? 100%. Or? So there's so much opportunity and it's literally everyone can like get a piece of the pie right now. So whoever is out there, whoever's listening, if you have like a skill, apply it, you know, just to cannabis and it's all yours. Have you always been a big fan of cannabis? Um, no, I, re I really didn't smoke like too, too much. Like maybe during like my teenage years here and there. But then now, like the last few years, I've been just all day, every day. <laughs> yeah. Did you turn to cannabis to relieve pain? Was it more yeah, of like stress, a, a relaxation? Yeah, stress, anxiety. Definitely helping me like go to sleep. I would, um, I just started taking like more natural alternative ways with living. So I'm like, you know what? Like instead of drinking, you know, having fun drinking and then waking up feeling like shit, you know, the next day I'd rather smoke and then get up and feel amazing. And then I just noticed like, Hey, like, I'm smoking and this cannabis is actually helping me, you know, like inside out. So the alcohol ha hangovers only become oh, worse oh, as you yeah. get older. But I have, I have realized, so I don't know if I told you this, but up until recently, about a month and a half ago, I was sober for three years. I took a break from, from smoking, from drinking. Nice. And, uh, when I came back to smoking recently, the weed was like so strong. I felt like I was high halfway through the next day. It was like a completely different alternative from from the previous three years because of how fast uh, the weed industry is growing. Oh yeah, especially like if you do concentrates and then you know your tolerance goes up. So it's always good to like take a break here and there. You know, it gets expensive. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I see fucking fifty dollars, sixty dollars, eight, even seventy dollars. I remember buying it in college for literally like thirty bucks. <laughs> Right, right. So, so tell, tell me a little bit about yourself. You have this entrepreneurial mind. You're taking on a handful of tasks, which I admire so much because life is a, a giant trial and error kind of con construct. It is. So what, what were you doing prior to becoming this magnificent uh, cannabis entrepreneur? Um, I feel like throughout life, like all these different moments in life have like, brought me here. So growing up, I've always like, I lived in Reno, you know, it was a small town. From Reno. From Reno, right by Lake Tahoe, you know, but you know, I'm a snowboarder, all four seasons, that's me. But small town girl and big dreams, you know. And right when I was like a teenager, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to Vegas. And I moved, I came out here like 17 and I just, you know, Vegas, the whole lifestyle, just serving, bartending, I got into that. And then um, just opportunities just kept happening, you know? I'm like, hey, I'm gonna try out for this. Like it was the Laundry Football League. I made it on the team, loved it, you know, networked. I still talk to a lot of the girls, a lot of my coaches and stuff from there. And then um, 
moved to LA and I was staying with one of my friends, my friend Sean and his, uh, his uncle had this real nice like property in Beverly Hills. We were real lucky. He's like, yeah, you can have our spot. You can have this rented or you don't even have to rent it. You could just have the spot. So I stayed out there and I got to be around like a lot of, um, successful people, you know, and they were like a lot older than me. And they, some of them were like 60 years old and, but so successful. Like one of them, he, he was like a hairstylist for Ronald Reagan's wife, Mariah Carey, you know? And he was like, Angel, you have that drive. You have that, you have that, what I had inside of me years and years ago. He's like that fire. He's like, I just see it in you. It just burns. And he's like, never let that stop burning. Like, keep it going. Let me mentor you, you know? And I'm like, no, no, I got it. You know, like I was young, I was modeling, I was doing different modeling things back then. And I kind of just like went around, I came back to Vegas, you know, did my thing, did some commercials out here and, um, yeah, represented different companies and such and just kept networking and networking. And then, uh, yeah, I don't, I just, I've been bartending for a while. And then I was like, you know what? Like, this is getting tiring. It does. Working in the industry becomes very tiresome. Yeah, it does. And I was like, you know, like, yeah, it was cool, you know, make grinding, making my money. But then like, I'm like, I need to start investing in myself here, you know? And, and then, yeah, I was like, you know what? I, I, I picked up smoking weed more and I was like, dude, I love this so much. I would love to make money and just smoke. That would be like the <laughs> ultimate dream. <here. laughs> Please let's make this work. So I just started brainstorming, brainstorming. And I'm like, I'm great at bartending. I love making drinks. I go to all my different jobs and they always ask me to make their, like their, their cocktail menu, you know? And I was like, you know, I'm going to make this bartending like business where I bring the bar to the people. They don't have to worry about anything. And then, so it was just going to be foxtail cocktails. We were just going to do liquor. And then, um, I went to, went to work one day and my friend Maya, she was the other bartender and she just knew, she knew cause every day we would work our asses off and we were like, ah, oh, we're walking with this, you know? And so her front, her roommate, Randy is actually, um, he was in the, he's in the industry and she was like, Hey girl, I know you're a mom and everything, but I need you to come with me after work to this birthday party. Like, it's going to be dope. You got to go. And I'm like, all right. And she's like, you got to network. I'm telling you, everyone in the industry is going to be there. So I went and had a, had a great time, ate some infused food got to meet a bunch of people. And then I ran into uh, Marnie. So Marnie, um, we, we clicked, we became good friends and months and months later, like I hit her up and I'm like, Hey girl, like, what are you doing? And she's like, Oh my gosh, I have like the best opportunity of a lifetime right now. I'm going to go and film a TV, a live TV show. And I'm like, what? Like, heck yeah, like, congrats, go get it, you know? And um, she hit me up after and she was like, oh my gosh, it was amazing. She's like, we're, but we're missing something. She's like, we need to spice it up, you know? And I was like, hello, right here, <laughs> you know? So we ended up, she was like, all right, can you be ready by tomorrow? Two episodes, have two drinks ready. We're filming live. There's no cuts, no edits. You ready? And I'm like, let's go. So I just did it. That was when uh, COVID happened, you know, right, right when COVID was happening. And I was like, all right, what other, what other better opportunity? I have the time, you know, it's right in front of me. Why not just go for it? You know? Yeah. Especially right in, right when COVID started, I had a message that I portrayed on here a lot. And I said that 2020 is the best rebranding opportunity we're all oh, going to get. And yeah. all those who really looked inwards in that time during quarantine and focus on themselves and rebuild themselves are all finding a lot of success right now. And I feel like with, with Foxtails, it's a perfect transition from getting out of the industry, but then also infusing cannabis into that. Mm -hmm. 
by offering THC products with you know with the the elegant bartenders and the the attractive server right. but also like the hospitality service that comes with the strip because that's exactly. what Vegas does so well exactly. but before we do move into some of the logistics of Foxtail I do want to track it back a little bit because there was something you said earlier that caught yeah. my eye and you said that you're a part of a laundry football league. Yeah. How was that experience? I've not met anybody that's been a part of that. Right. So I played in 2012 and it was a great experience. Like all the girls, they were tough. All of them are so tough. So when we would train, we would do two a days. We would even do like all day training and we would uh, train at phase one. I think mm -hmm. I, I had saw, Mike Waters yeah. on here. Yes. Yep. I saw him and um, we would train at phase one and it was coach cap and coach red and all the girls. And then a lot of the times there'd be like different athletes like in there, you know? So right next to me, I'll be like climbing the rope, like, Oh, pushing the tires over. And then right next to me is like an NFL player. Yeah. Brandon Marshall works know? out in there. But and I'm lot. all, yeah, that's what's up, you know? So yeah, I, I can keep up. What position do you play? <laughs> corner. You played corner? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yep. You good at tackling or just uh, cover it? Cover coverage, it. yeah. I can I can move. I can move, so. So wearing lingerie in the football field, do you get a lot of turf burns and, like, scrapes? It was, yeah. Like, the equipment itself wasn't the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't think that out. No. So it was a little, it was more like hockey equipment, mm -hmm. you know? So a lot of girls were like messing themselves up, you know? And I think that's why the Laundry Football League didn't go as far as it could have. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people were, they were just getting hurt a lot. I could only imagine, so. yeah, it's a lim limited padding, uh -huh. uh, and everyone who's playing is probably fairly new. They're athletic, but the game still takes years to learn. I played oh, football yeah. for four years, and I felt like I was just getting, or finally understanding how to play the game right as I was graduating high school. Right. Yeah, I didn't even know anything about football until, and then I made the team, and I'm like, okay. Did you just apply or try out on a whim? I tried out, I was doing like a bunch of my modeling stuff. And then I saw that they were doing, they were casting for the laundry football league. And I'm like, I got to get on there, you know, like the MTV it's on MTV. It's there. They're like during super bowl. They were yeah. They do the puppy it. bowl, right? Mm -hmm. Like right around the same time as mm -hmm. the super bowl. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I got to get on there. Like I got to get on the screen somehow, some way. So. Got it. Angel has the <laughs> killer yep. instinct, mm -hmm. some might say. Okay, pushing it back forward to, to Foxtails. How, how do you operate Foxtails when you roll up to, let's say, a private party? Do you provide the, the bar equipment, I do. the servers? I do. Yeah, how, how's the rollout? It. Yeah, so Foxtails, we bring the whole bar, a real nice bar, the whole bar experience to the party. And makes the host really just, you know, they don't have to worry about anything. And you so. provide all of the, the women or the male bartenders as well. Yeah. I have like the best mixologist. I have one that I have a, a lot of them. I have one that breathes fire. And then I have one that he's on, he works for the hell's kitchen studio. So he's like, Barely speaks English. He doesn't need to. He just, he moves and it's just so elegant and just so wow, you know, he can do anything. <laughs> and where does so. the TH THC product come into play? So they have two choices. They could do the bar, the regular bar where they have the cocktails and mixed drinks with liquor, or they could do, because I don't like mixing, or they could do um, the THC and C infused, or CBD infused drinks package. So that's good. Um, I wear, I make it where everything's really, it's not, I mean, I do, I infuse the simple syrups. I infuse all of my just syrups and everything. So it tastes really good. It's not just like, it's not yet dri dripped, dripped in, in there. Or, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it probably takes a little bit to prep all of this it then does. for the C for the CBD mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know how you, 
how do you infuse it into the simple syrup? I did have Eliza on here, who's the Blaze chef, mm -hmm. and she went through her process of how how she infuses food or food, and you have to like prep the butter You're before right. you even have the meal. So exactly. it takes like a day or two even to to make the entire th process. Exactly. Yeah, with chefs, they do like their butters and oils. What I infuse is my syrups. So it does it does take like a day to infuse because you do have to like decarb your cannabis. And then after you decarb the cannabis, that's how you take the the weed and then you infuse it into the syrup and then you go from there. Mm, I'm so, assuming then, it probably takes a while to sit mm -hmm. and sulk. Yeah. I yeah, well, I boil I boil like my syrups and then I decarb the cannabis and then I mix those in. So what's the specialty THC drink or C B D? I actually make all of my drinks custom to the party. So it's whatever like anyone's feeling, you know. Um, I like doing a lot. A lot of people love sangrias. They're so easy. Um, but let's see. Sangria sounds nice. Right. I did that on the show. So that was really good. I did that with some CBD, I believe. So for for cooking for a queen, is mm -hmm. that just an extension from the 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 trials through foxtails? But I know with cooking, you're actually cooking food rather than with simple syrups. But it seems like the next kind of transition into completely diving into the cannabis world. Right. Um, with foxtails, I mean, that's how I kind of got into cooking for queen. They were, Marnie was like, Hey, like you got the drinks, like, come on. And I'm like, okay. And it was brand new, you know, and everything I kind of just like, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. You know, if I don't know it, I'll learn it on the way. If anything, like sometimes you have to do trial and error, but I mean, you keep going. Um, but yeah, tell me about Cooking for a Queen. Cooking for a Queen. Uh, I love Cooking for a Queen. Cooking for a Queen's been on for a year. and How many episodes? It's six, seven, seven, six episodes. Yeah, it was real. We, we filmed them, we knocked them out, and Fusel loved them, and they still have them on the platform. So it's, it's amazing. I'm able to really connect with people like from across the world, you know, and I get like real nice messages from people from everywhere. And they're like, you know, like one, one's from Boston and he's like, Hey, I've been watching your show. Like, I really like enjoy everything that you guys are doing. Like, and it's really cool to like, you know, inspire people. He's a chef, you know, and he's now infusing. Yeah, you. Yeah. When you're putting content out on the internet, you really have no idea who's listening, who, right. who's watching, who's inspired. Right. That's what I've learned through the podcast. I get messages constantly from random people supporting, or they want to critique something, or they landed a job opportunity because they reached out Isn't to the person the who came on the show. Yeah, it's, it's extremely fulfilling right. and, and rewarding it to is. know that your your message is echoing with somebody. It is, even especially when I did um, Harvest and Light. So Harvest and Light, we did a CBD popcorn, and I we brought that into um, Exhale Dispensary across from the Palms, and it was a hit, you know, and people, women, I remember this woman came in, and she was like, Angel, you guys changed my life. Like, my son has epilepsy, and he has a hard time, like, taking CBD and his medication, and she's like, your guys' popcorn is wow. like amazing, you know, and it's so easy for him to, to eat it. And I'm like, that's awesome. You know, that's the most rewarding thing of all, you know, out of all of this. Like, it's not the money. It's not any of that. It's literally being able to like touch people's lives. So where is Harvest and Light now? I didn't mention it mm -hmm. in the beginning. Uh, I know it was one of your first businesses. It, mm -hmm. uh, can you explain what it was and then uh, why, yeah. why, why you decided to not continue it? Yeah, of course. So uh, Marnie and I, the one on the show, uh, we decided, we were like, hey, like we're promoting all these other companies on the show. Why not pr promote something of ours? And so she had her popcorn um, at the time, Strictly Hempen. And so we rebranded into Harvest and Light and it took off. And um, it was it was really good. There was 
different things like here and there that with 1010 Sensuals, I'm able to really just make all the different choices and, you know, and so I kind of stepped back from Harvest and Light and um, I was like, you know what? I really want to work on something of my own, Mm -hmm. you know? And so like the last six months, I'm like, you know, I'm going to put all my energy, time, everything into Harvest and Light. Yeah, okay. it's or t- ten cents essentials. <laughs> you don't you don't realize, but was that your first business? I uh, I mean foxtails, and then harvest and light. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but really, harvest and light kind of yeah it opened was, your eyes to yeah, entrepreneurship, exactly. how businesses operate. That was 100%. that was similar to me. My first business was an antique store with my mm-hmm. father and family. My second business was uh, a tech application with one of my friends. And we ended up, we ended up working on the project for like two and a half years and closed it, but it taught me so much on like how to, how to discuss operations with your business partner, how to negotiate with others that you're right. trying to partner with mm-hmm. and just kind of like the inner mechanics and the, the emotional roller coaster for the most part that comes with Being an entrepreneur, days you wake up and you're like, I'm taking over the world. I'm about to sell this popcorn to literally 7 billion people (laughs) across the map, even though I don't have an e-commerce platform set up. (laughs) And then two hours later, you're like, why am I doing this? Like, this makes no sense. Right. And those times you just got to remember your whys, you know, why am I doing this? All right. Do you remember your whys? Why? Of course. My son, you know, my son and... I am, I'm a firm believer of God, you know, like I, I truly believe that, you know, like I'm on a mission here, you know, to spread like love and the word and just know that wherever, you know, wherever you come through from in life, it doesn't matter. Like there's no judgment. It's always like you can move forward from it, you know. Once you could get past the the judgment from others, Mm -hmm. then you can really empower yourself to pursue any mission or endeavor that just pops up into your mind. That was, that was, that was like, we put these like mental barriers up all the time of Mm -hmm. whenever we pivot to a new, a new job or opening up a new business. We're like, what do my friends think? Are my followers still going to follow me? Are they going to unfollow me? Because now they're going to be getting a, a different message. But then once you start doing it, you're like, why did that even matter? Like, why was I even concerned about what other people were thinking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you define yourself, you know, and if people, they love you, then they love you, Mm -hmm. you know? (laughs) It is, it is a beautiful thing. Um, And it's funny because when I first started the podcast, I had a bunch of followers drop off, but then about six months later, after I showed consistency with, with the podcast and my mission, a lot of them ended up following me again. So it's like, I was mm-hmm. like, what was the issue? It's a, it's such, we live in two realities where we're trying to build in the physical world and build this reputation, but then we also have to live in this digital representation right. of ourself, which is not always a hundred percent authentic. So right. it's this weird balance. Right. I know. Like even with social media, I'm like, okay, like sometimes like things aren't, always the perfect thing Mm -hmm. you know it's not always that image up but you really got to remember like people are real like things happen to people and yeah (laughs) it seems like I mean your your Instagram account when when we first started messaging Mm -hmm. seemed to have a lot of attention on it It seemed like you've grown and you've been able to show your message and because Mm -hmm. of that I saw that you were in a contest for one of the the cannabis awards, right? Yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, um, July 9th here. What are week. what are you in the running for? So Las Vegas uh, model, uh, cannabis female entrepreneur, and brand ambassador. Wow. So, yeah, I wasn't expecting any of the nominations. I was just. I got nominated and I'm like, what? So it was real, you know, touching is, you know, it's nice. Yeah. It seems like the cannabis 
industry or the culture at least in vegas everyone kind of like bands together it seems they like do. like we mentioned before that you had done some some partnership with the blaze chef who was yeah. on here uh -huh. and everyone seems to be collaborating yeah i, I mean it's it's better to like grow with people than you know mm -hmm. try and go by yourself you know it's so much easier just to build those relationships. And it's real beautiful when you see everyone like coming up, you know, I'm like, dang, this was only a couple of years. Look at you now, you know? Yeah. And when you invest in a relationship and you provide social capital to somebody that's in the beginning stages of their or ascension to success, once they reach that milestone, oh, they'll yeah. give it back to you. They'll pay it oh, forward yeah. somehow. Oh, yeah. You may not know in the beginning how it is, but it's always paid forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So building relationships, keeping those relationships great is always like key, you know, you have to nurse them like mm -hmm. a hardcore. Yeah. So I, I do want to go back to cooking for a queen because okay. I'm interested in mm -hmm. some more of the details. I think you had a co-host on the show, correct? Yes. Marnie. And okay, Marnie. So the, and, I'm the co-host, and Marnie was the and host. And Marnie is the uh -huh. host. Mm -hmm. And you're just making random meals. You're just infusing meals. Um, so we would have our we would have guest chefs on the show, and really great cannabis chefs, all from like Netflix and from Hulu, from all like networks. You know, they filmed, and then they would come film with us, and they were like, "Wow, the experience with you guys are, is awesome." You know, it was real. Uh, welcoming we had um brett raymer he's our tv producer and we would um film at swag house studios we called it swag house it's a big mansion of his is that out here in vegas it is uh-huh he just sold it and moved in to another mansion but yeah i mean we we did he did a lot of different episodes there not just cooking for a queen he did a bunch of other shows during covid so. Is there going to be a season two, even though there's a new house? Um, I don't know. Let out, let out the secret. <laughs> I know. I don't, I mean, <laughs> we're all so busy and there's so much like, I mean, the show is still going on. So maybe, yeah, let's maybe. Hope, <laughs> let's hope so. Okay. I saved, I saved this for one of the last discussions. There's a, huge box sitting on my table yes and uh it's from 1010 sensuals yes. which you explained is your your passion project yes uh tell us a little bit about why you feel so passionate about this product so with um so when i decided to step back from harvest and light i really was like you know what let me just take everything i learned and put it into something. And I didn't know what I wanted to do yet. And then I saw like there was massage candles, you know, and I've used, I used one and I'm like, Oh, this is so legit. What's a massage candle. So a massage candle is a, as a candle, when you burn it, it actually turns into a massage oil and then mm. you're able to like pour it onto your skin. Really? Yeah. So I'm like, Oh, that is so nice. And I'm like all about massages. Like I'm such a if you invite me to the spa, I'm there. You know what I mean? Like I'll get a massage every day if I could. And, um, yeah, I was like, you know what? Like, why not infuse this? You know, like it's perfect for people like with pain and I could just do so much with it, you know? And then, um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. That's what I'm going to do. And then every day I would just like day in and day out, just keep like, researching, teaching myself, like, cause I never made a candle before, you know, but I'm a great mixologist, you know, I'm great at recipes. So I'm like, you know what? I can make a recipe. Let me get this. And, um, yeah, I just started getting to work and started testing and did my research. And I'm like, you know what? There's not that many competitors. Like I could totally take over the market with this. Like this is, you know, insane. And I already got um, an account before it was already, before my candles were made. Um, I partnered with one of my cousins. She owns a salon in Reno, Rosemary, and um, she she was like, "Hey, we sell we sell massage candles." I like. She's like, "We do this whole like 
pedicure and we pour the nice oil on and really like rub them down. And it's a whole luxurious, you know, spa treatment. And she's like, but it's not, they're not infused. And I'm like, well, mine are. And she's like, I know I need yours <laughs> right now. And I'm like, okay, done. Right when I make them, they're yours, you know? So I already have an account um, there. And then here it's going to be like, I'm going to just hit the ground running. Like I finally have them made, you know, I, I literally just got the packaging today. So, so th this, these haven't hit the market yet. It has not. No, Ooh, we got a first experience yeah, inside yeah, look here. Yeah. Inside look. So, so how long did it take for you to perfect the process from ideation of, I want to do this CBD candle and then through the research to the product sitting on the table now. Six months. It's six been six months. Yeah. It's been a fun six months. Like it's up and down, up and down. I'm like just trying to, I'm like, where am I going to get this stuff? Oh my gosh, I have to get it overseas or how, how do I cut the cost, you know? And different little things like in business, it six months seems long. But working on like it, yeah. Feels like a century. But now I'm like, it's here. It's finally here. So. Are you planning yeah. on distributing this through e an e-commerce platform? Yes. So you can go to 1010sensuals.com, uh, 1010 sensuals. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And you're going to be able to, to ship this away to other states or yes. is it just yes. Nevada? No. Throughout the whole U.S. Um, it is CBD only. So I'm totally allowed. That is good. And I cannot wait. Like once we go, um, once the map goes green, I'll be, I'm looking in the future to have this more of a one-to-one, -one, like a CBD and THC. THC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the, that's the weird uh, counterbalance that you have to, to work with when you're in, in the cannabis industry, because the the weed regulations are so different with lot. all the states. <laughs> it's, there is. it's like you need you need a lawyer just to figure it out because there's loopholes and there's certain prohibitions in other areas. Mm -hmm. Some of it's medical. Some of it's just like wild wild west. Just smoke as much as you want. Right. Put anything. Put weed into anything. Right. Like when I'm at the when I'm wrapping Stizzy or Stizzy, um, I'm at different. Uh, dispensaries and people are like from out of town, they're like, how do I get this over? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I know. Wait until it's green, but I know. But I cannot wait until the whole map's green. The the CBD doesn't affect the smell of the candle? No. It doesn't? No, no. That, you know, I use um, pure distillate, so it's really just so pure. It doesn't alternate anything. And what, what sense are you offering? Um, right now I'm just doing one. It's called level up. That's mm, I like that. <laughs> right? If I get general. the, if I get the effects without the scent, then I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> right. So with that, it's lavender, eucalyptus, spearmint, and musk. So I made it more into like a, like. What's up YouTube. We're going to take a quick 60 second break to give a shout out to the first ever sponsor of the guestless podcast. And it is none other than manscaped. It's June, summer is here, Fremont Street is packed. I was out the last three nights till 3 a.m. It felt like old Vegas. We're getting ready to go to the day clubs. And you know, for one, as a man, we need to make sure that we are trimmed in the right areas. I'm a big fan of Manscaped. Like I said, I use the product. I'm happy that they came on to be a sponsor. But lucky for us, they just came out with a brand new product for us. And I'm going to read it off just so I don't mess up. From the legends who introduced the greatest electric ball hair trimmer ever, Manscaped is now introducing the Ultra Smooth Package, a razor and formulation kit designed for the brave men out there who like to go to the skin when they trim their balls. Your new nickname is going to be the Bald Eagle after using the Ultra Smooth Package. Here's a picture of it. Make sure you guys use the discount code, The Guest List. You're listening to The Guest List. Use the promo code, The Guest List. Very simple. You'll get 20% off and free shipping anywhere in the United States. If you're a fan of the show down here in Vegas, you know this is a must. So make sure you go to manscaped.com, use the code THEGUESTLIST for 20% off and free shipping. Your balls will thank you. Now let's get back to the show. Men and women, you know, they both can 
love it. So it's more like a spa. You guys want to see? Yeah, please right. show us, show us. So please. make sure you guys are watching on YouTube so you can right? see. See, that All is right amazing here. packaging. That candle Thank is huge. You. Thank oh you. Oh my God. Yep. So this is seven ounces. The jar is 10, but in here is seven. And I branded it. I like that wooden, everything. the wooden top. It's in like a right? circular. What it's is it? What is that? About it's it's like probably mat. like four inches, five mm -hmm. inches tall. Yeah. Oh, this is heavy too. Mm -hmm. I like that on the top. It says 1010 and then 1010 noun time of personal development, spiritual awakening and enlightenment. Yes. Batch 001. This is a yep. collector item. I need yep. to put this as an <laughs> NFT so, so I can right? I could keep it forever. Right. Did you come up with this definition? I looked it up and I, yeah. And I kind of, I looked up what 1010 oh, means. Oh, smells amazing. Oh <laughs> yes. Oh, this is awesome. Right? Right? So, yeah, I mean, I love it. Yeah. On the front, <laughs> so, so, so what I just read to you guys was off of the top for those who are just listening. And then on the, the front label, love it says level up all in one, 500 milligrams, CBD mm -hmm. massage candle, yeah. special book. Special blend of beeswax and the finest oils. 30 hour burn time. Yes. Holy yeah. crap. Is that, is that normal for a candle? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh-huh. I mean, those candles, uh, regular candles, they would probably go more like 40, but mine, I, I tested it and the oils and everything I chose, like that's how it burns. I, I just made it into like the perfect massage oil so it burns 30 30 hours and but that's if you don't pour it on yourself right so that that was gonna be my next question was that as it burns can you pour the oil on you as it burns or do you have to wait until it's completely no. mm -mm. Yeah. so you literally i have a little oh there's a little wooden spoon yeah oh, so that's you literally awesome. while it's burning and it's it has like the oil you literally just take it and then start massaging you your partner it's real I, it's fun. And that CBD assists with joint pain from, from what I understand mm -hmm. for the Inflammation, most part. Inflammation, yeah, joint pain, muscle pain. It helps like if you work out and you're sore. Yeah, definitely like recovery um, all around. It This absorbs through your skin. So with my candle, you don't need to like wash it off. It's super moisturizing. Uh, clean ingredients. And when you burn it, unlike other candles, um, it purifies the air. Mm. So like me, multi purpose, myself, right? Me myself, I have like the worst allergies. I like live with an EpiPen, Ugh. but so I really like hand chose, hand picked everything that's super clean that no one would have like allergies to, and 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 how much does it sell for? Sixty five. Sixty five. Mm -hmm. Sixty five. Is that? baseline with the competitors um, as well or is this a premium this is actually pretty i mean it's an all-in-one candle and it is infused with 500 milligrams so if you were to like go to a store and try and get like a 500 milligram like balm or solve it would be even more really yeah so you would be looking at like 70 you know mm -hmm. 70 dollars around there but so this, this is a huge candle so i assume yeah. you can use it handful of times oh yeah to spread oh, yeah. this is not just for one person no. unless you're going to cover your body maybe no, four times <laughs> yeah no it'll last a long time it is infused i did put um i infused it with some gold flakes and um some healing crystals amethyst stones in there gold is amazing for your skin and yeah and the crystals i mean everyone loves you know well, healing crystals, it makes you feel amazing. I don't know. I, I asked people on Instagram, like, what do you guys like? And I got like different pulls and I'm like, all right. And I, that's how I kind of made this, you know? So how, how would you get this placed inside of a dispensary? So me working with Stizzy, um, I go around to different dispensaries and Lloyd, Lloyd was like, he's the one that hired me. And he was like, Angel, I saw you at your own pop-ups. And he was like, you, you're just a beast out there. And you don't just stand behind, 
you know, your table. I'm out there talking to people, you know, interacting and really getting to know everyone. And um, so he hired me on with, with Steezy. And so he saw basically how I would do things. And I don't know. What was the question? Sorry. <laughs> from from what it sounds like to get your product placed in these dispensaries. Oh, it yeah. sounds like because it's yeah, because so, of its wild, wild west nature, yeah, it's built so, off of mm-hmm. networking and relationships. Yeah. So I literally, I go around to different dispensaries. I'm the hype girl for Stizzy. And I get to make all these great relationships with the owners, with the managers, with people that, you know, with the bud tenders. And I'm kind of like hinting here and there, you know, and they love it. They love the idea. So um, once I'm ready, which I'll be ready here any day now, I'm just going to go in there and be like, hey, you guys need this on your shelves. So I like where your tenacity is and your mind you're building you're on the foundation because you're going through an ambassador program, which we will touch on Steezy in a second. But from from what I understand, a brand ambassador is somebody who generally sets up like the tables mm-hmm. and the pop ups at private events or public events, dispensaries, and so on. Right. But you're there so you could build the relationships exactly because of because of the the loose background of the Ex- nature. Exactly. But, and then once you build that good relationship, you're like, hey, look at this super awesome candle. Boom! Like, exactly. Because <laughs> I don't let me like love this too. Yeah. Especially yeah. because when you walk into dispensaries, and I've only been smoking now for about a month since I've been back mm-hmm. into it. So I haven't been into a lot recently, but it's mostly, it's not like home good products that are in there, like candles, right? It's like right. CBD water or these CBD gummies or right. just like a J. You don't see these like home products that are right. infused with, with CBD. I know. I really think this is a great, this is a great product I got going on. Can you, since this is only CBD, do you have the ability to sell it at grocery stores? Yes. Yep, you already know. So I'm gonna hit up your local Sprouts. Sprouts and is where it's at. Joe's, you know, I love those stores. Yeah. So even farmer market, farmers markets. I'm gonna just go everywhere. Yeah, there's a far, They do a farmers market down here in the arts district. You'll have to to talk oh, with. See? That's like perfect for the for this area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all of the very exuberant personalities. Yeah, and then all my packaging is eco friendly. I think you know people love that too. Everything's handmade. So one thing I've learned, especially talking with hundreds of entrepreneurs out here is most causes need some sort of social impact attached to it or social cause, Mm -hmm. whether it's being eco-friendly or donating some of the the proceeds to some philanthropy or social drive or something like that. So going down the eco-friendly route seems the right way because- I just had on a gentleman on here. His name's Sidney Coitorio. Mm-hmm. He runs Purple Purple Rose Purple Supply. Rose Supply. Yeah, yeah, I have the I have his Canagar up uh, on. Nice. Uh, in, in I there. know they sent me some. Uh, they sent me a box. I'm so behind. I totally <laughs> got it. I got to do some content but with it. He also yes, he I also yeah he also uh, founded Na- Native Leaf Co. as well about nice. like the completely organic hemp leaves wraps that you use. And he was telling me that you would think in the cannabis industry, all the products would be natural, but the majority of them aren't Mm -hmm. because a lot of these companies are actually cutting corners around it to save money because there aren't as many regulations as you would think. And that's not me. That's not me at all. Yeah. I, all my oils and butters, I literally handpicked and made sure like the origin itself was like very clean. So that's another reason why it's been six months. I I really had to choose the best ones. So (laughs) do you hope to build out, um, 10, 10 sensuals to things outside of just candles? Oh yeah. So yeah. So 10, 10 sensuals, sensuals is the candle line. And then I'll do 10, 10 other things. Definitely. I, I love, um, clean living, more, you know, I definitely want to do like the beauty side of the cannabis industry. I can, you is know. there a market for that right now? Um, I had, I had a tester someone gave me for, it was like a CBD mask and I did a little content on Instagram and people, girls were inboxing me like crazy. 
And they were like, I don't know your skin routine, but I need it. And I need that mask like right now. So I'm like, okay, ding, you know. Yeah. Organic beauty supplies are high in demand oh, yeah. as, as I've discussed with a few people that are working in that industry. Mm-hmm. You have to find it because also with, with the preservatives that are in it, people are disidentifying yeah, with it. Exactly. And then, yeah, growing like before I never had allergies. And then I think just putting all these different things on you, you know, that isn't the cleanest. Your body can't. Do you think we see a anymore. world where CBD is just like infuse it into everything? Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I even want them to go back to like doing like hemp, like they like using hemp for everything, clothing, gasoline. It's just like so much more eco friendly for everything, you know, plastic burning and you know, things that are unnecessary doesn't, we don't really need, you know, it, or it seems like there is a misunderstanding around hemp for a long time because it was outlawed, but now you see like hemp rope and hemp right. hemp based products. Cause for a long time, I thought hemp was, was weed. I, like, right. I, I, I don't know why I compared them to be the same thing, but it's actually just a, an ingredient that's attached to the marijuana industry. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. So yeah, like, like this, for example, CBD, it doesn't have THC in it, you know, so it comes, it still comes from the cannabis plant, but you don't get any of the psychoactive effects on it where people, you know, a lot of people, they're like, Oh, I don't want to get high or anything, but there's just so much in the plant itself. That's so useful. Everything, the whole plant itself is useful. It has a lot of natural remedies, Mm -hmm. holistic properties Mm -hmm. that And when it comes to like a holistic centrism, it really depends on who you are and your body because we know we're the only one who knows our body the best. So you don't really know which ingredients are going to have more of a drastic impact on you one way. For for me, like when it comes to to smoking THC, whether it's sativa or indica, I'm probably going to be in the couch no matter what. (laughs) You got to look at the terpenes too. Is terpenes, that, is that yeah. what affects like the, the laziness? Yeah. So terpenes definitely, you got to like, if it's high in mercy and that's going to give you the more body high and you know, if you, if it's more lemonine, you're going to be more alert. That's the lemonine comes from like lemons, citrus, you know, everything has terpenes. So, and terpenes and everyone's different. So different terpenes affect people differently. You know, so people like if you are like just starting out smoking weed or taking CBD, you know, like always take note of it, you know, see how you react. And so how do you know this much or how is your knowledge? How how do you have so much depth to your knowledge of the cannabis industry? Are you just secretly a nerd that just constantly researching online or is it through your experiences? Through experiences. Yeah. Even when I was on the show and Marnie, she asked me something and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know this answer. I'm totally just going to wing it. You know, it's in it. And I was like, I cried after because I'm like, oh my gosh, this show, I don't know if I, what I did, you know, this episode, I don't know. But when it, when they put it on, they, it looked amazing. I was like, oh, it didn't even look like I didn't know what I was talking about. But I think like, I mean, it's so new and I'm always so open and I always try, I'm like a sponge. I try and learn, you know, and especially like I am in the industry. I do need to know my stuff, you know, like I I own it now. Like, okay, I'm now in the industry. I got to, you know, be on top of it. Do you think, do you think the cannabis industry makes its way over onto the strip at some point? Yeah, we'll see. With these can because the cannabis, yeah, the, the cannabis casinos. lounges just got approved about a yeah, month ago. I know, right? I know. Take, I know. They said they won't be rolled out until twenty twenty two. Yeah, you, I'm sure if the if the if the casinos can get their hands on it, of course, why not? That would be fun. That would be fun. I know the the issue with cannabis on the strip for a long time, outside of just the smell. And I had discussed this with a lot of people in the industry when I worked at the nightclub was that if they allowed marijuana into the, specifically the nightclubs, then the majority of the consumers wouldn't spend as much money on alcohol right. because they would just be high and you'd be content right. because it lasts for so long and you don't have that like edginess or crave for weed. Then you do yeah. like alcohol where you're just like, you just keep giving it to me. 
Right. I know. So that's a little, we'll see. We'll see on that. But I know definitely like, I wouldn't mind if it's not on the strip. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I would totally go to a lounge off the strip. I would totally support like the smaller business 100%. Some weed lounges. Yeah. It'd be nice. But the confusion I had around weed lounges is that I guess you're going down there just to smoke weed, but it's like generally you could smoke at your house. I don't know. Maybe it's like they're going to have to attach something to the experience of the lounge. Oh, That's yeah. going to encourage people to go down I'm there. I'm sure that they'll have music, live music <laughs> and really good food, you know. I wonder if they're sure. going to be able to cross pollinate weed and alcohol in the same venue. I know. That's what I don't do with foxtails, like, because it's, it's real. I there, mean, people, it's a big, it's a big gray area because yeah. it's like, do I allow people to be crossfaded? Right. Like what if they're driving? Right. It's, you don't, you don't want to be, or you don't, you don't want to get in trouble for them going off and doing something else. Right. right? And then you have negligence or mm -hmm. they, they put the blame on you. So that's still a gray area that has yet to be solved. Exactly. Exactly. And I never, I never, I don't know. I don't like smoking and drinking at the same time. It's either one or the other. Get the spins. Right. I used to always <laughs> say that if I were to go out and I was going, if I did smoke beforehand, it would be smoke first, then drink, not drink and then smoke because mm -hmm. I swear to God at a fraternity party, party in college, <laughs> I was drinking so much and took a hit of this J and like almost passed out. <laughs> so oh, I, I know. It's like the world fell out from under me. I know. I went to a life is beautiful, not last year, the year before. And Oh, I had so much fun, but I hit, I smoked, I hit a joint and I was like, why did I do this? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I'm like, okay, there's times, there's times, you know. I have to say the weed pen though has really changed the game, especially when it comes to like music festivals where yeah. so many people are just actively smoking out in the open, but you don't know. Or you, if you're a security guard that works for them, you could say, oh, I thought it was a... A jewel. A jewel, yeah. yeah. With Stizzy, we have um, ours is super sleek and discreet. So everyone thinks that no one ever knows. They always think it's a jewel, you know. Easy sell for me. What what products does Stizzy offer? Um, in California, they have they have flour pre rolls, a lot of different kinds of pods, a bunch of you know, like a lot. They have a whole line of stuff. Our clothing's inside of Zoomies. We're a whole cannabis lifestyle brand. And uh, we ventured out, moved to, you know, now we're here now in Nevada, Arizona, Michigan, um, and counting. And we're just now rolling out with different, our products that we do offer in LA, like our wax, flower, pre-rolls, et cetera. But I mean, we are award-winning number one in the industry for our easy vape pen really yeah it's that discreet and that good uh, yeah like people like wait like we're like apple like in california when we drop something people wait for like 24 hours plus is it the Can't design tell. of the product or the actual quality I, of the, the cannabis qual i think everything i think um the brand itself when i before i started when i was starting 1010 i was like looking at different cannabis brands and i'm like you know what out of all these brands, I really love Steezy. Like I love like just their whole vibe, how they market everything, how they make everything real exclusive. And, you know, like some, like with their clothing, they make it once and then that's it, you know? And I told when they were, when we had our meeting and they were like, we, they wanted to bring me on board. I was telling them about that. I'm like, Hey, I was, I'm looking, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm, I look at your guys' company, like as, you know, really up there. And I, I try and not replicate everything, but I really do like look up to them, you know? So what perfect opportunity to work for them, you know? And so you reach out to them? No. Well, I saw Lloyd, he posted something like, Hey, like who wants to be on the team? And I'm like, literally that day I was like looking over, you know, like different brands. And I'm like, what? And I hit him up and he's like, Angel, like, let's do a meeting for sure. Like I've always had my eye on you, you know? So I was like, oh, this is meant to be. <laughs> I love how fast the world is evolving because for the majority of my life, 
you had to apply for a job at a job fair. You had to go in person. Yeah. You had to kind of get a referral. Now you can just actively message somebody that you find interest in exactly. or just respond to a post. And I it, love it. And your life can be changed literally in just an instant. Exactly. Like the people you meet, the, the road, you know, the paths you cross, you never know. Especially out here in Vegas. Yeah. Every time I'm always like, oh my gosh, this is meant to be like, this is crazy. I love it. And when you know, like you're, you're on the right path, like everything is just, just doors open people like they just, they're in your life and it's wonderful. I love it. When you're, when you're living a life fueled by passion and it's not fueled by, by greed or Mm -hmm. by the attempt to accrue as much money as possible. Yes. That's all that we want to do. But, but many kind of lose sight of why they're doing things, right? Like mm-hmm. you're, you're wise, as you mentioned before. But when you live your life through passion and you're building out things that you find enjoyment, it doesn't ever feel like work. It just feels like it, you're living. That's why yeah. you've taken on 400 different things because yeah. you're like, this is just, this is what embraces me. This exactly. is what I feel like it completes me as a whole. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. I wouldn't change it for the world. And you know, like I've never been that girl to like sit at like a desk. I, I did have a job like back in the day I was work. I did like taxes for the city and I would just like, I would be the one that's like with my headphones and just falling asleep. I'm like, I can't do this. I got to be up and active and doing random stuff. So I, yeah, now I'm here. <laughs> Taking over the world. Yeah, Taking yeah. over. <laughs> Angel, before we get out of here, I have one final question for you. Same question. I ask everybody. What does Las Vegas mean to you? Las Vegas, home. I I love representing Las Vegas. I love, you know, like when it cooking on the queen, like, hey, I'm Angel Roselle, you know, Las Vegas entrepreneur, cannabis entrepreneur, like out here doing it, repping, you know, when I worked or LFL, all of Las Vegas. I love Las Vegas. Yeah. It, <laughs> it is it is a one of a kind city. Just an immense amount of opportunity. Yes. And everyone just finds such a infatuation with it. I love to hear it. Uh, where do I send all of the listeners and viewers to follow you, order 1010 10 Sensuals, et cetera? Yeah. So all social media at Angel Roselle. And for 1010 10 Sensuals, you guys can order your candle here soon. 1010101010sensuals.com. Boom. Everything will be tagged below. Make sure you guys go down, give Angel a follow. Make sure if you made it this far, you subscribe to the channel, et cetera, all that fun stuff. So Angel, thank you for coming thank on. You. I 100% believe in your mission thank and you. I admire your consistency to just keep pushing. Cause thank that's, you. that's thank what you makes it. <laughs> that's what makes up a purebred entrepreneur is just the grit to never give up and pursue what they want. So thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you next time.